the Oscar for Best Picture is presented to... And the Oscar goes 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 to... And the Oscar goes... And the Oscar goes... And the Oscar goes to... The Oscar goes to... The Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... The Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... And the Oscar goes to... Hey, what's up, you guys? Uh, my name is Artur. I'm joined by my friend here, uh, Ryan. Uh, we're going to talk about our predictions for the Academy Awards coming up very soon. Early February is right upon us. Uh, but with everything kind of wrapped up, with the gra uh, with pretty much all the major award shows... Yeah, they're, done yeah they're, they're done now. So now I think we can all make an informed decision about it, who we think are going to take home the biggest prizes of the night. Uh, so we're going to, there's going to be an article that we've already written on the website that you can check for the full list here, but we're just going to stick to the main talking points. So Ryan, uh, what, what category are we going to start off with first? Uh, we are starting off with best sound editing. So best sound editing is going to be our starting and we're going to make way to the bigger awards of the night, which will obviously be Best Picture being last. So. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take this in from two different areas. Like, the, there are certain, certain categories where we think there's there's nailed on winners. Like, there, it, it's kind of hard to go up against yeah, it. 100%. But then for other categories, I think we will have more of an opinion about who we think will win and who we think probably should win. Um, Most definitely. Because the Oscars, if they're known for anything, is to snubbing good movies. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, oh uh, my god, yeah. That was the year crash. Uh, yeah, we already had our whole conversation about that. Yeah, oh my god, yeah. Off camera. <laughs> yeah, that would take way too long. It would be way longer than a 20 minute video. You know, another, we know we can have another video where we talk about um, like the biggest snubs in, yeah. the, in the Academy Awards. That, that could be a whole other video. Okay, yeah. so let's get started. So, best sound editing. Um, I think it's probably going to go to the Joker, and um, I think that's. I think that's nailed on. That's one of my nailed on. Uh, so I don't, so, you know, I think it will win and I think it should win. I definitely just agree with you, honestly. I think Joker, when you, when you watch the film, there are some other movies in this category that may stand out. Mm. But from what we've seen, Joker definitely is the lock at this point. Is there, is there another one that you can probably see it maybe being a close rival up and towards the very end? I mean, if we were going to go for like a clean sweep, mm. which sometimes we've seen happen, uh, one year that comes to mind is 2015 with George Miller's uh, Mad Max. Oh, yeah. Oof. And we can might see that in 1917, where it just sweeps majority of those Oscars as well as the bigger most well-known Oscars, but I think at this point in time, Joker is definitely a lock. All right, okay, so then, so it's a lock. <laughs> next category. Uh, so the next one is uh, best sound mixing, which please don't get it confused with best sound editing as we just did. Yes, different. Uh, so um, based on the do based on nominees, we have the, the list here in front of us. I think that. See now this this is actually a pretty good shout out for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because if there's anything you can like you can always level criticism at a Quentin Tarantino movie for loads of stuff. Like there's yeah. so many things. Oh, you're yeah. like, why is there so many feet in this? But <laughs> one thing that you can never really take away from his movies is the soundtrack. Oh, 100 percent And how well yeah. it's integrated into the movie. Yeah. And I think that whole tradition is carried over into his uh what is this? His ninth film? Yeah. Ninth film. Oh. That's a whole separate video. We can discuss <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, but yeah. for me personally, yeah, okay. wait, nine or ten. How do, it all depends on how you look at Kill Bill. But that's something we're not. Even Kill Bill should be one movie, by the way. Yes. Just it was there split up. It was split up because yep. they thought it was too long. Yep. So there you go. If you see it as one film, then we're at nine. We're at nine. Yes. I'm, yeah. So I don't want to go top one tangent on this, but Quentin Tarantino, he keeps talking about making his tenth movie, and people are like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what do you think for oh, uh, best sound mixing? Hundred percent. See, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. He directs his, all of his films, and this goes back to the beginning, where he has a soundtrack, and he's like, "This is the, these are the movies, sorry, the songs that I want in my movie." Yeah. And then he writes specifically with them in mind, because he's the one going to be directing it, so he knows exactly what he wants. 
And that's where sound mixing, particularly in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, really stands out. So for me, it's a lock as well. Really? Wow. Okay, wow. So we agree for two, two out of two categories. Okay, what's the next one in this, uh, in this lineup? That's production design. Ooh, this might be a little different. Okay. Okay. I'll let you start. Yeah, okay, I'll start? Okay. So production design. See, this is difficult I because I have three in mind. Uh, for separate reasons. So I think 1917 might take it. Yeah. Because they genuinely, like, it, it I, you're gonna hear this a lot, but 1917, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to look like one shot, uh, so there's a bunch of secret cuts in it. But with that, you need to then set up the scene in such a way that moving the camera around stuff works out well with it, and it doesn't disrupt the story from where the characters have to go. So they need to make sure, like, the track for that shot looks perfect. 100%. And every trench shot in that movie is gorgeous. However, the Irishman does a really good job in making you feel like you're in that era with those people and like in that time frame. And I know none of these people. Like I watched this with my girlfriend's dad, who's a big like big fan of like mafia movies and that kind of yeah. stuff. And he read the book that the Irishman is based on. And he's like, yep, that's that's exactly how it was. And I was like, you sure? He's like, yep. So, I don't know, they're neck and neck. Uh, and the last one is Jojo Rabbit, because it's hard also to make it look like it's 1930s Germany. Yeah. Uh, especially nowadays, so uh, props to that. But it's between Irishman and 1917 for me. I'm gonna go, and this is a little off what you've said so far. Really? Okay, that was good, it's the first yeah. disagreement. So, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, in my opinion, is in the lead at this moment in time. Wow. And the reason why okay. was when I f when they first announced this film, I saw a leaked image from the set, and I saw how they they took Hollywood Boulevard and converted it to a 1960s Hollywood. Mm. And one big thing about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I remember reading at the beginning, was how they how they had to get many of these cars that aren't even on the road anymore. And this it was one yeah. of the because Quentin Tarantino wanted as many cars as physically possible from the 60s. So they had like over 200 cars from Europe, everywhere they could find it, any barn they could find these cars, they had to get them from. And one thing I really liked was the contrasting of uh -huh. of the sets in the film, uh -huh. where you have you have the larger than life, hyper colorful imagery in all of like the 60s grandiose parties, uh -huh. or just like all of like the the montage moments of the film. But then you you also have they do such a great job when when we're depicting like the Midwest. And like the the wild wild west, sorry, is what I what I actually. Because we do to. get a lot of yeah. different scenes yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. different contrasting sets and and in terms of production design, it seems like out other than 1917, which I think's tied with it. Okay. They it's very larger than life. Okay. I agree a lot with Jojo Rabbit, especially some of the scenes towards the end of the film where it's like it's all in rubble. Sorry for anyone who hasn't seen the movie. You so should already. But if you're watching this, you probably yeah. see <laughs> But um. Yeah, I, f that's for me. I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Well, is is it locked in for you? I think this is not a lock. Okay. I mean, All right. I think so it's a very iffy category. Okay, so then I guess we'll we'll have to wait until the actual night to see. Yeah. I'm okay. Sure. Next category. Um, ooh, costume design. <laughs> so yeah, next next one is costume design, and this one I I, I find this always difficult because. Um, now this is where I have the separation between what I think will win and what I what I want to win. Period pieces are favorited by the Academy, just naturally. Yeah. Uh, so Jojo Rabbit should, in a way, have a little bit of an advantage here. Um, the Irishman probably should have also a little bit of an advantage. Um, Little Women probably will also have an advantage in this kind of category. Just because when you have to make and dress your actors to look like the period in time, and if you really get it like nailed on, then I don't think any like if there's a science fiction movie in there, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like it's it, like it won't go to them. So I uh, I'm gonna go with the Irishman. I'm gonna go with the Irishman, but it's not a lockdown. Yeah. I think it should win, but any of the other three I mentioned could oh, will will probably win. I agree with. Every point you made, ah, I, mean, yeah. I would have went with the Irishman as well. Yeah. Like for me, it's like you said, period pieces are typically huge yeah. for the Oscars and when it comes to costume design in general. So I, I'm gonna go with the Irishman as well, just in terms of 
what the the amazing job they did of especially with with the actors and like ensemble they had at time. one point that's sh that scene of like um um I forgot the main the main uh character's name in the movie god damn it but when he's being accepted into the mafia by yeah. by Joe Pesci's character Robert De Niro's character yeah the way they make all the bosses look it, I have not felt a presence like that given off like of a mafia character since like The Godfather yeah. Like the way everyone's dressed. Yeah, like larger than life. Very, you know, like they're mafiosos. They're the yeah. big. They're the big boys. And Scorsese in this film, and with the help of a wonderful costume design team, they make you really feel like yo, these guys are guys we do not want to mess with. Yeah. So next cat. So wait. So we both agree. Uh, yeah. The Irishman. The Irishman. Yeah. Uh, is that locked down? I think it's locked down. I want to go with the lock. We're going with the lock. Okay. All right. So I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We're going with lock. Uh, oh, okay. Best, yes. Best makeup and hairstyle. Yeah. Okay. So I actually have a lot to say about this one category. Okay. <laughs> because uh, usually, usually there have been movies like Suicide Squad. That that that's the category it won for Oy. in in the academy. Sorry, just to have one of the main superhero movies to have an Academy Award, and yeah. it's Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad is a cat Academy Award winning. <sighs> Never forget that. Film. You gotta say it like in the French way yeah. so they know it's a proper film. But. It is keto, as they like to say. Hair and makeup, if you're gonna go for iconic use of hair and makeup, it has to be Joker, to be fair. Yeah. Is it the best that we saw this year? No. So, I see people have been putting Judy up as a, as a really good candidate for this just because of the, the style and the, uh, that the movie's in. But I want to say Joker. So, um, I was saying that I think the Joker should probably win uh, hair and makeup, but your pick of Bombshell um, makes, I think, a little bit more sense to the Academy in the way that they're thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, just think the way they're able to uh, tr uh, make certain actresses and actors look like real-life people from that time, I think Bombshell's probably going to take it. If it does take an Oscar this year, it will be Bombshell. All right, next category. Best, Best film editing, editing, which it is one of the hardest categories in the academies this year, because you have Ford v Ferrari, yeah, great cool. editing, mm -hmm. uh, The Irishman, which we talked about, like they kill off Jimmy Hoffa in that beginning clip where he yeah. says I paint houses, yeah, and you don't notice it. Yeah, you do not notice it's something that I remember having to go back and see. Yeah. I don't remember. I did not like. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I hundred percent. Oh no, 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 I no didn't way. see that at all. Yeah. Um, then Joker, like great editing also, and then Parasite. So yeah. it's it's hard to choose between one, but I am gonna go for The Irishman. Yeah, I I agree with you. Just The Irishman was excellent in all that it did, and uh, just the editing. It it was a three and a half hour film, but it felt much faster. It was easy to digest, as as, yeah. you, as you said previously, and um. Yeah, it, it, it was as long as Endgame, but it went fa by it just as fast in my eyes. Yeah, because th th that's another thing is the editing can the editing is what allows the viewer to intake the movie. If your editing is very jarring, like in, let's say, Bohemian Rhapsody, it makes it hard to follow exactly where we're going, what we're doing, and who's talking to who. But in The Irishman, which is a, you know, like you said, long movie, but you still know exactly where you are. You you always understand exactly what's ahead of the the actors and what they're about to do and that kind of stuff. And that only goes down to, well, obviously the storytelling, but the editing. The editing is very important. So, yeah, I think Irishman. We both agree. Yeah, that's a lockdown. That's a lockdown. One thing that had because we previously did add this. Oh yeah, Lee Smith should have been yes. for film editing for 1917. Yeah, should have. It's, it's a technically sound film and everyone loved it just how wonderfully it was created. Yet Lee Smith does not get film editing. Lee. I thought that was definitely a big snob this year. Just think about this. The movie looks like it's one shot, but you know it's not one shot. So that's how good the editing is. The editing is so good you don't notice it. That's, I, that at the very least it should have gotten a nomination. 100%. 100%. All right, next video. Oh, next video. <laughs> next, next category. category. Best visual effects. <sighs> okay. So, I think it should go to Avengers Endgame. Because if you're a kind of person that wants superhero movies to be taken seriously and to be recognized by the larger film audience, 
then it makes sense to give the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects to Endgame. Because I think all... I want to say every frame of a movie has a special effect in it, but it was absurd what they did with that film. Oh, yeah. Like, the amount of resources and people it took to probably just, like, make one battle sequence or just to make Rocket move around, you're like, yeah, that's... I don't know. To me, that's that's hefty work that should be recognized by the yeah, Academy. Definitely agree. Endgame was a larger-than-life film with heavy visual effects, and... They looked wonderful. I mean, we've seen some movies over the years that the visual effects look terrible, and Endgame at three and a half, uh, nearly three and a half hours, did an excellent job throughout bringing these characters and everything yeah. to life. Also, uh, shout out to what we actually think might win. Like, I want Endgame to win, but it might be the Irishman. Yeah. It, uh, all, all, in all the de aging effects that we yeah. we were talking about this uh, a little bit before ago. But the de aging technology that ha that we have now in Hollywood is becoming to a point where it's becoming so sophisticated that it might be able to be used way more. Yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah. It, 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 like, could it get to the point where actors, you know, are not needed? But like, if an actor has passed away and they were in an iconic role, like General Tarkin in Rogue One when they brought him back, like, could we see more of that in the future? And I think so. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely something that we can see a lot more with heck you have a lot of aging actors and actresses and you want them you want to keep seeing them well, yeah i want tom cruise to be tom cruise until he's 80 <laughs> well maybe with the aging we can right? <laughs> that, that's another thing like harrison ford let's say knock on wood even though there's no wood around but let's say like like one day when harrison ford passes away what happens at the movie studio like we want to make a new re uh, like a new indiana jones but we want it still to look like harrison ford because yeah. that's the character so they'll just get a character you know an actor that looks like him and then they'll just you know yeah like it's becoming that sophisticated oh yeah Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger getting de-aged in every single Terminator movie that comes out now is. <laughs> we will get into that. We will not get Dark into that. Dark Fate. Ooh, one of the worst movies of the year. We won't get into that. I watched Dark Fate. We will not get into that. Okay? Uh, last shout out, and this is supposed to be a negative shout out. The Lion King is a terrible movie. It is. It looks gorgeous. It looks like you're watching National Geographic, but it does not deserve the Oscar nod. It does not. It just. It's. It's a bad cash grab of a movie. Yeah. Next category, please. <laughs> <laughs> Next category, best international film. I think I think it's a one-word response. Parasite. Yeah, Parasite. Parasite uh, should be a lock. Is gonna be a lock. Yeah. I think that's all we gotta say. Mark. Yeah, that's it. Like, there's really no other point. Yeah. Next one. Best documentary feature. Uh, like I um I think there's probably one real good um uh, like like uh forward example of this, American Factory, uh co-produced by the Obamas. I think it's. I think it's even. I think it's based on a factory out in Chicago. Oh wow! Yeah. So it it is very telling of a huge, um, like sector of our of our economy now. Like warehouse workers make up a large percentage of labor workers in you know in North America. So you being able to get a, a hand like a first hand look into how some of these people live, how they get paid, how they work, it's amazing. Yeah. Like. Everyone who here hasn't used Amazon. Exactly. You get that one day shipping, okay? The same day shipping. How do you, how does it get from the factory to your house? Well, exactly. Stuff American Factory does an excellent job of just showing just behind the scenes of it all. Definitely think it's it's gonna get the recognition it deserves this year. So I think we're both in agreement yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Alright, okay. So American Factory for uh, best, best documentary feature. feature. Next category. Best original song. Okay. I've heard that Frozen 2 has a great soundtrack, and then I believe that the song that they're going with in, um, what's the name of the song? Oh, uh, Into the Unknown. It's supposed to be good. I heard it on Spotify, but until I, like, see the movie and see how the, the song plays in the movie, I can't really make that claim, but, like, I, like Stand Up in the, Har uh, in the Harriet movie it was really good. I can see like an outside uh, shout, you know, winning like breakthrough, um, standing with you. That might, you know, that might win. But really, there's, there's no. Do you think there is like a, 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 a head-on clear winner in this category? Uh, yeah. I think uh, I'm gonna love me again from Rocket Man. I think 
it's Elton John's like he's saying goodbye to Yellow Brick Road, oh. and it's his it's his uh, farewell. And if there was ever gonna be a way for him to get a, a thank you, a big thank you from the Academy, it would be this. They won they won the uh, Golden Globe. They they won a Grammy from it. So if there was ever something that just the icing on the cake, it's the it's the Oscar. So I I I would say that's a lock at this point. Yeah, and also, uh, Taron Egerton deserves mad respects for that oh, film. Yeah, definitely. Using his own voice. Yeah, the film did not get the recognition it deserved in other categories, definitely. Yeah. Next category, because like, I also agree with him. I think Rock, I think Rock of Men was a stellar film, and it should get recognized for something. Mm -hmm. Alright, next category. Uh, best Original Score. I'm going to go with Joker. Yeah, I have to. I think it's. Him. I think it's too iconic at this point. Yeah. It's a uh, main theme. Yeah, I think Joker was definitely the most out of the box uh, uh, score of the, of this year. Um, the other uh, nominees have all had excellent uh, recognition over the years. We John Williams is perhaps the greatest of all time when it comes to soundtrack scoring. So uh, everyone else was did an excellent job yeah. in what they did, but. I think Joker definitely had the most out of box and will get the recognition this year. So Joker. Well here we're hoping. Yeah. Next category is Best Cinematography. Okay. So this is this is a harder like category than, than I initially thought. Because who do you who do you think should win? Okay, well I think Roger Deacon should win. Mm. Uh, I I think he's going to win. And but I don't think that it's, I mean, on the outside it's very clear cut, but when you really dive into these nominees, it's not, it's much closer than it, it will actually be. Yeah, because that's, that, that's not a thing, and uh, taking into account exactly how the Academy favors certain movies and other ones, that's why I put, I'm going to put forward The Lighthouse yeah. uh, for a, a potential sneak win. Uh, just because in the way that it's shot and the fact that it's in black and white and they're able to contrast, you know, those really harsh shadows mm -hmm. with the light makes, it, it makes the movie look gorgeous and it uses techniques from, from the, from the 1920s, from German expressionist films, French New Wave. Yeah. Like these are, these are techniques that still have their merit in filmmaking of, you know, in 2020. Oh yeah. It's, the film is in a format that is not often seen. It's actually a square, so it's not even three four. It's a square, and just the fact that it's cut. Sorry, it's presented in such a way. Yeah. Where you can literally take screenshots throughout the film of scenes, and it's like, wow, like these are these are beautifully set up, and that's what cinematography is at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that uh, the Lighthouse is a film that should get recognition in this category as well. But Roger Deakins and his work on 1917 will probably be a lot. Yeah, that movie, it, it is the best looking movie of the year, I think. Um, 1917. 100%. Yeah. So, next category. Best animated feature. Okay, um, for this category, what I thought was the best animated movie of the year is not even nominated, and that's Weathering for You. I watched it during TIFF, and I thought it was beautiful, and it told a really important message that I think is important, especially to people in and around our age in 2020, about being very like conscious about your, like, your carbon footprint, because the movie deals a lot with the weather and manipulating and changing it, which is exactly what we're doing with global warming. So, mm -hmm. but since that isn't, on the list, I we I think we both agree that they're just gonna go for a very safe pick, and they're gonna choose uh, Toy Story Four. Yeah, Toy Story Four. It's still a good movie. It's but yeah. like it, I, it very it's, much feels like number three was the peak of that series. Oh yeah, I, even I, though I like two more. Oh yeah, two's my. I'm much surprised. Two's my favorite. I yeah, favorite, but three was where it should have ended. Yeah, they made four. That's okay. Yeah, it's a weak animated. Uh, year in terms of nominees, so I think that Toy Story 4 will win and that's about it yeah. Mm -hmm. The next category because that's not a thing if you look at it like uh, the third how to train your dragon movies on there like yeah, Exactly, it, yeah. it's not the strongest year. Yeah, not not a strong year for, in the animated feature Yeah, category. two two sequels and no Japanese films, whatever <laughs> Okay, um Best original screenplay now. I love Nagzao. I really like that, but 
it is just a murder mystery at the end of the day when you really boil it down. Yeah. So I think it's gonna go to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. I don't think it should, but it will. I agree, definitely agree with that. Once, yeah. It will probably go to well, it's most definitely gonna go to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino. But I think we both agree that Marriage Story. Yeah. Definitely should should have more recognition in this category than it does. Yeah. Cause like the story that it tells is so tight and it's so so personal that they're just able to like make you connect with with that character way more than I think Quentin cool. Tarantino is able to make you connect with yeah. um, you know the characters in his movies instead. But as we've seen in past history, Quentin Tarantino always usually kills in this kind of category, um, both in Glorious Bastards and Django Unchained. And I I'm pretty sure he fully got the nod, just didn't oh, win. Yeah. Um, yeah. But those other two did win, so. It, Clearly, I think the Academy likes his style of writing, so it wouldn't be out of the question for it to end. But Marriage Story, yeah, in our opinion, probably should take it. Also, shout out to Artur. He had a, just now, he made a pun without even knowing. What, what, really? Yeah, yeah I didn't know. Like that. Tarantino killed it, and, and look who keeps killing all his movies. Think of think Wow, of damn. <laughs> Next category, Best Adapted Screenplay. So I think we, we both stand Yeah. who we think should win. And I'm just going to take me yeah. on this one. Uh, the Irishman was an, is an excellent film. It was written beautifully from a novel. Yeah. That Well, not a novel, a non-fiction book that did come out. So I know you had a story that you'd like to talk oh, about. Oh, oh yeah, no, no. So like I watched the, the original, uh, I watched The Irishman with my uh, girlfriend's dad and he read the book. And I was like, is that really what happened? He's like, yeah. I was like, really? The, like, the Italian mafia rigged the election to, for JFK to win? He's like, yup. <laughs> so, like, if you can, like, the movie made me believe all of that. And then to know that all of that's been adapted from a book that told a really, you know, like, like a true story about that, you know, Jimmy Hoffa, this guy that was big in the 1950s, yeah, he was huge in the mafia. <laughs> so, like, it, I, 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 I think it's great. But I don't. I want like the I don't really I get I get how the the Joker got lumped into the adapted screenplay because it's already an existing character, but it didn't really adapt a traditional Joker story. story. Yeah, it's a it's an original twist definitely. Yeah, that so that one you know maybe maybe for that one, but I think it should go to the Irishman. I I believe it should go to the Irishman as well, but. I have a strong feeling that Greta Gerwig's Little Woman will be getting it this year. And it's just one of those situations where people wanted her to get nominated for Best Director. She didn't get it. They wanted her to win uh, Best best Picture. She's not going to get that either because Best Picture is so jam-packed. Yeah. And uh, I think if, if they're going to give her a nod this year, it's definitely going to be in this category. So I, I think we both agree that we, we think the Ashman should win. Who will win? Uh, I think it's Little Woman with Greta Gerwig, but we don't know. But I, I have no idea. Like, I, I genuinely, to me, could be any of those other than the two popes. <laughs> Fuck the two popes. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa! Actually, wait, we're already past the first minute of the video, so apparently we can swear. I don't know. Based on YouTube's thing, it's it's apparently that's how you can get ads on it. Like, you just oh. don't swear for the first like minute and a half, and then then oh. you're uh. Uh, your your ad friendly uh, content. Your ad friendly content. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So next category, uh, best supporting actress. Best supporting <sighs> actress. You have a pretty nailed on um, yeah. pick. So, so I, why don't you you yeah. why don't you tell us? So Laura Dern in Marriage Story. Uh, Laura Dern has basically clean, cleaned up house so far. She's gotten the Golden Globe, the Critics Choice, the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, basically everything you need as an actor or actress that tells they're gonna win the Oscar, she has. Yeah. And I think it's at that point where there, there's no one else that will deny her in this category. But definitely, uh, she's, de she's definitely deserving of it. She has this one monologue in the film with Scarlett Johansson where she's telling the role of a mother. And it's, it's, it's excellent. And I honestly think that she does deserve it for her role. I agree. Uh, the only thing I don't agree with the nomination list is Scarlett Johansson being nominated twice. Even though it is kind of, a, I, I'm, I, I'm almost, a, almost a hundred percent that she is the only person to have been nominated twice in two separate categories. However, does not deserve that. She I'm, will for the other category though. I will be looking this up just to make sure. Yeah. If maybe it is. 
Maybe it has happened again uh, in the past. All right. So this one actually, despite actually having some of the best actors I think ever in cinema in oh, this yeah. one category, oh, yeah, like stacked. Brad Pitt, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins. All I'm saying is I don't think we've ever gotten a better like list of actors all in one category oh, yeah, that's ever. Absolutely stacked. It's a stacked uh, year. That being said, it looks like Brad Pitt's taking it. Yeah, it's it's one of those scenarios just like Laura Dern where it's history has told us so far that he's won the Golden Globe, he's won the Critics Choice, he's yeah. won a Screen Actors Guild. At this point, he's locked it in in the eyes of I guess the Academy and people that are voting, right? Mm. And it's one of those things where we both agree that we think someone from the Irishman should probably yeah. take it. You, you think you think more Joe Pesci? Yeah. I think more Al Pacino. Yeah, mm. I, I guess my reasoning for Joe Pesci would just be the fact that he's always played these characters that are r really up in your face. He's he's arguing, yelling, he he will hit you, like you know he makes his presence known. But in jo in the Irishman, he really embraces his inner Marlon Brando, Vito Corleone, and yeah. it's just. He's he just cold as ice in that yeah, movie. Yeah, and he's very me he's just menacing. Like he just stands there and you know he's up to no good. And I love it because yeah. he's like Joe Pesci is like this five foot two guy. Oh yeah. And in the movie, he, he it, the movie makes him out to seem like he's six foot six. Yeah. Exactly. In in the yeah. status he holds. Oh yeah. Hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. Okay. So um but we, we think Brad Pitt will win yeah. despite the fact that we you know, maybe don't want him to. Would, do you want him to genuinely win it? I mean, I enjoyed him the Once Upon a Time of Hollywood. I think he has the best scene. That the yeah. the that whole fight scene oh, in yeah. the in the living room. That's the best part of the entire movie. Oh yeah, and but then the flamethrower oh. scene right afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I I hundred percent agree with with Brad Pitt having phenomenal uh, scenes and a performance in the film. Yeah, but with such a stacked category and the fact that Joe Pesci had such a 180 and what we're used to. Yeah, I think he definitely deserves some recognition as well. But I, I'm not upset with Brad Pitt perhaps winning. No, no, it won't. It won't. It it, it won't feel like they got robbed. But it, it definitely feels like maybe the like I think Joe Pesci's and Al Pacino's performance will be remembered for longer than Brad Pitt's in uh, Once Upon a Time. Yeah. and we'll notice that as the years come, like as the years pass on by, like it's kind of hard making that claim now. Yeah, for sure. But I think so. So next category, which has also fantastic, it, it's it's also a great lineup of women mm -hmm. uh, for best actress this year. I'm gonna, you have a nailed on like yeah. to you. This is a nailed on winner. Yes. But I think that Scarlett Johansson should win for Marriage Story. She was so I, good, I, so I, good. See, I agree with that. So good. Sorry, three times. When I watch, you can go on my uh, if you go on my Twitter feed and you and when I'm talking about Marriage Story, I love Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver in this film. Yeah, and I think we'll they, get to him. Yeah, we definitely will. <laughs> but I I believe he uh, uh, she deserves recognition for it. But I just think it's just I believe all the acting categories this year are already locked based yeah. off what I've said already. Just the fact that they've won the previous awards needed. And Renee Zellweger, her performance as Judy, I think, is a lock at this point. She's cleaned house. She even got the BAFTA award. So, it's at this point, if there was someone to win this category, it's her. I would love the upset. I would love the Scarlett Johansson upset. Yeah. Academy, if you did that, please. I think Scarlett Johansson is is an actress who's blossomed over the years, and she oh, deserves yeah. an Oscar. Especially for this movie, and she's still really young. Yeah, like, like she started acting at a very young age. Oh yeah, she's had some wonderful. Like, but it feels like she's been around for a very long time. I think it's just the fact that she's been in so many superhero films. It just, yeah, like when you're in a, in a series for that long, I think it just it takes up so much of your time. I remember yeah. her in like Lost in Translation. Lost like, in Translation. Two thousand and three. Two thousand. Yeah, two thousand two. Yeah. So like she's movie. she's been she's been around for a very yeah, long she, time. Yeah. So. If there was definitely an upset, we both would agree that we want her. But yeah. I think Renee Zellweger probably gets the lock this year. Mm. Next category. Ooh, best, best actor. actor. All right, okay. What, once again, great lineup of, uh, of actors. Antonio Banderas, Leonardo DiCaprio, Adam Driver, Joaquin Phoenix, and Johan Bryce. Now, I personally, in my heart of heart, 
want Adam Driver to probably take it because his performance in Marriage Story, especially after that one hour mark, there's like, for oh. for one hour, he's the very passive, very accepting husband. And for the entire first half, you're like, why are they divorced? Why, why doesn't she like him? He seems like a good dad. He seems like a good person. And then you're like, yeah, he's actually very self-centered. He's like, I don't, I, it's so hard to just encapsulate the entire performance and just in a couple of like adjectives. I just think he put on the best emotional performance of the year, especially in that last fight between them two in the in the very end where it's all over Twitter now. Yeah, yeah, you cannot, that scene's been going around a lot, you cannot uh, basically discuss the film without discussing that scene. Yeah. Adam Driver has been a actor who has blossomed in the last five years. Like, I think there are very few actors out there that have really grown since we first saw them. Yeah. I, my, like, you agree with me the first time we met him was in force awakens 2015 and he which you very much agree with carried yeah. carried the, the star Wars only no 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 only good part of the trilogy yeah only good part that yeah. goes all the way throughout yeah poor guy had to carry like in the entire <laughs> the entire story he dies in the end spoilers but yeah it's uh uh we don't talk about <laughs> star wars ended <laughs> with return of the jedi uh I think that's that's basically all we have to decide. What yeah, no, Adam, Adam Driver here, but Joaquin Phoenix yeah. would probably uh, is is probably gonna win this category. Oh, yeah. and at the end of the day, yeah, I think it's for two reasons. One reason, as we already listed for other acting uh, yeah. categories, he's had all the awards he needs to win, but just the fact that he was he was so excellent in every scene. Yeah. From, from the from the his, like we see a a, a man who's es essentially uh, descending into madness throughout the film, and he does an excellent job physically portraying it through his emotions as well as just with his body, like just his physical. Yeah, the, the, the like, shoulder in the oh, movie. Yeah, like God, that that's dedication. Like yeah. like we need to understand exactly how much effort Joaquin took into all of this because it's not easy being thrusted into a role that someone has already made their own. Oh, like yeah. it's very like an Oscar nom an Oscar winning role. An Oscar winning role. Yeah. So it could the Joker win another Oscar? I think so. And it probably will. Yeah, and Joaquin Phoenix, I don't know if, if you've been on his bandwagon as long as I have, but I love the guy. Oh his yeah. His story and just he always isn't is himself. He's one of he's very few actors and actresses in Hollywood who truly uh, believe this is who I am and I will stick to it. He wins the Golden Globe on Sunday, is in jail on Tuesday, comes out of jail on Thursday, and is winning the Critics' Choice the, the, the Sunday after. That's a week in the life of Joaquin Phoenix. Like, like, just yeah. think about that, right? So I think Joker, his performance in the film was excellent. He deserves it, and yeah. Yeah, like I, there, there's, there's. A, I think all the other uh, Academy uh, nominees, while good, um, I don't think really hold a candle to those two top two. Yeah, 100%. the closest kind of third leaning, like leading the pack, probably is Antonio Banderas's in yeah, Pain and Glory. And Glory. Yeah. But other than that, it's really just between them two. I think. Yeah, I agree. All right, now for. Really, the, the the two biggest awards of the night. Um, best director, first. Um, it, it has to go to Sam Mendes. It just has to, doesn't it? Yeah, like that's. It has. Oh, 1917 man. is a movie. It's his. It's his. It's his and Ro Ro Roger Deakins baby. Yeah. Like them two together, is the reason why that movie is like that. Take one of them out. Put someone maybe just as good. The movie's not the same. Yeah, I agree. I think Sam Mendes has his entire career has been leading to this. He's he's made some big films like he yeah. made the James Bond films, the last the last two. Yeah, the last yeah. two, and uh, or sorry, yeah, last two. And he definitely is uh, someone who is used to big pieces. And but this film is truly one that's been with him for a long time, and it comes out on screen. So he definitely deserves it. Well, is there someone else? you believe should probably win if okay. we're going to get I'm going to use process of elimination. Quentin Tarantino, no. Yeah, agree with that. Um, Scorsese, not for not for Irishman. 
Like, I know that sounds weird. We've been talking about how good this movie is this entire video, but yet it doesn't deserve best uh, director. It might deserve best picture, but we'll get there. Um, Todd Phillips, maybe. He's kind of my outside shout into this because... Really, that movie, I think it's Joaquin's. I think yeah. I think it's a one-man performance that he's just like, roll the camera. So I don't know how much of Todd Phillips is in that movie. Uh, and, oh my god, so is it, it how do you pronounce it? Bong Joon-ho. Yeah, okay. Um, Parasite was probably, you know, the year's best movie. So it could also go to um, him, her? It's a him. Okay. It's a him. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> Covering uh, my bases. Yeah. But it, I, I, it feels like it has to be Sam Mendes. Yeah. A couple things I, I just want to add there. Todd Phillips, before this, was known for the Hangover series. Okay. <laughs> so Todd Phillips has done a complete 180 in his career. Yeah. And I'm really, I was really happy because I remember when he first was announced to make Joker, I was like, what? Todd Phillips? This is the guy that was getting... Uh, a little oral action in the elevator in the first Hangover movie. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how he would go from doing that to such a dramatic film, and he did a wonderful job with it. And the Academy Award. For Best Picture. The least hated movie of this year is probably Jojo Rabbit. I think there's very little that I think people disliked about it. So there is a world, there's a possibility in which Jojo Rabbit takes Best Picture and snubs everything else. But based on the last couple, you know, last two to four, maybe I think like the last four years of Best Picture wins, before we used to get big budget movies as winners. Then we got art, like, like art house films. Mm -hmm. And then last year was what, Moonlight? No, la no, last year was uh, The Green Book, that one. Green Book, and yeah. then the year before that was Moonlight? Mm, year before that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Moonlight. It was a whole Oscar fiasco. That was hilarious. Um, so, if we're following in that trend, it looks like it should be between Marriage Story, 2017, probably Parasite also, but it doesn't look like Parasite's going to win. Because it, it, yeah. foreign movies don't win Best Picture. Yeah. They just don't. Yeah, actually, I want to just something I want to add there. Last year, uh, the Green Book won Best Picture, and if it, if it was up to me, I would have chose Roma. I mean, thank Roma, you. But there's a couple of things that the Academy it hasn't warmed up to yet fully, and one giving a foreign film the Best Picture because you know Hollywood doesn't want to be like, hey, they, they don't want to give up the yeah. elitism yeah, of exactly. like, like that's how good we are that we always win Best Picture. Yeah. That and the second thing is Netflix is has been fighting. Yeah, with major Hollywood studios for a while now. Just look at TIFF. Yeah, I don't know if you know the story, or well, you probably do, but yeah. the story about TIFF direct and Cineplex was like Netflix films are not allowed to show at our at oh our, yeah at, in our in our uh, stu in our uh, cinemas. Yeah, so TIFF had to completely change their schedule so they can fit all Netflix films still inside the award ceremony. Sorry, still inside the the film festival, but without being shown the Cineplex. So it's just like Hollywood does not want to allow these internet studios, yeah, right, to take over yet, or even give foreign films the recognition they perhaps deserve. Mm -hmm. But like, Parasite was an excellent film. Last year, Roma was an excellent film, and as you said, Parasite just doesn't have a chance for that reason alone. Like, uh, if like if we're gonna go punch for punch, I think Marriage Story and Parasite has the best movies of the year. Yeah. Like, yeah. beat for beat. But... <sighs> it's difficult. Like, like best best picture is always the most aggravating out of all of the oh, categories. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the amount of petitioning, the amount of campaigning that a lot of these studios do beforehand, you know, before we get to this point where we actually have the nominees, where I think uh, the voting process, it's done already for Best Picture, but you're not allowed to not, you're not allowed to campaign negatively against another movie. So if you're the producer of like say Marriage Story, you can't then come out with a campaign saying don't vote for The Irishman. Like that's not allowed yeah. in, in like in the campaigning process. And I'm pretty sure there was even one time where The Hurt Locker or Zero Dark Thirty 
it was, I think it was Zero Dark Thirty, um, like a day before, a day before the votes were cast, somehow it got leaked, this idea that the FBI somehow gave the director and producers classified information to make the movie, you know, to make it more realistic. And that, you know, obviously be against, you know, security, like, like national security, that, that you wouldn't be able to do that. So a lot of people where it felt like it wasn't going to win because of that smear campaign. Surely enough, Zero Dark Thirty did take the, the best picture uh, at the very end of it all. But it just shows you the level of, like campaigning matters. It's not the best movie wins. It's not. Like it should be, but it isn't. So that's why we need to take, you know, these extra kind of premises into consideration. And that's why probably something like Marriage Story probably won't win, yeah. but should. It's, it's the sad reality of the Academy Awards. Yeah, uh, it's politics, just like anything else. It's it's a lot of politics, and you got to deal with it. Uh, that's why, like, if just by going with what you were saying, Jojo Rabbit could just sneak up out of nowhere and take take the gold. Yeah. Right. It's it's like. Could you see one of these movies getting more than fifty percent immediately by everybody voting, which is just a bunch of people in Hollywood? I mean, if it's if. 1917 would pro if there was a movie that would immediately get 1917. It, 1917 yeah but if not right and if it goes down to what you just said yeah right it will be like i can see jojo rather doing it right because i wouldn't see a lot of people voting for marriage story like you know it'll get those 15 20 percent votes and then it'll just be ticked off because you know uh, the the people's you know second or third choice will start mattering more yeah than that so either way Best picture is frustrating. We'll find out exactly who wins on the night. Uh, what what the what night is uh, the Academy Awards on? February 9th. February 9th. So coming up soon. I know. I actually, I actually, get, uh, I know a lot of people do not like the Academy Awards, but I get very excited every year yeah. for them. I know it's just like people in the industry patting themselves on the back and, and pretty much, but like, it's the biggest prize in film. Oh yeah, like I. Listen, I'm a huge uh, football fan. If you guys were looking at my base right now, you would see. Okay. Yeah, the Bills. But, uh, yeah. but I'm a. <laughs> but for me, the Oscars are always bigger than than the Super Bowl, and the reason why is because I put a lot of time and dedication and care into watching all the films, like thinking about them and making my picks, and it's something that's important to me. I know a lot of people just blow it, blow it off as oh, it's just another a award ceremony. It's too long. It's this. It's that. I love the glitz and glamour of the of yeah. the Oscars, and uh, yeah, it's definitely it's going to be an exciting night, and I'm excited to see. Definitely, I would, I would love to see some of my picks be wrong. I would love yeah. just to be like, wow, just if all of our picks that we thought were shoe ins like locked ons do not win, it becomes a better uh, it becomes a better uh, like night. Like oh. even though things get robbed, things get snubbed, it just makes for a more entertaining show. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree with that. It's. Sometimes you want to be surprised. Yeah, like right? the whole Moonlight fiasco that happened two years oh, ago. Oh like, like that, I'm, still, that, that, I'm still upset about that. It's an iconic moment, though. Yeah, like, it's I'm an iconic still, moment in television. I am still upset. If you go back into my tweets from that year, yeah. you'll see my tweets. So I'm like, okay, I'm a huge Damien Chazelle. Oh, uh, I love Damien Chazelle. Chazelle, yeah. Okay, I, I am absolutely huge. You um, wanted him to get that Oscar, oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, yes, yes. Because Whiplash. Yes, Whiplash yes. deserved it. Whip, Whiplash was an excellent film. He, I think that the Whiplash was probably the biggest, uh, like, other than looking at Quentin Tarantino for someone to make a first film. Yeah. And just completely come in and blow out the water. Oh, yeah. Damien Chazelle did an excellent job with that. And then I was, and ever since then I've been waiting. Every time I, Damien Chazelle comes out, they're like, "Oh, First Man! I love First Man too, right? He oh, does a, yeah. he does a great job with it with his movies." That man. snub, that was snubbed. Yeah, that I was, forgot, I forgot about First Man. That movie has been snubbed in certain categories. Oh, uh, First, oh, First Man. I don't even want to talk about best score. First Man did not even get looked at for best. Yeah, score. and that was that cinematography was too. That yeah. shot when they finally see the the moon for the first oh, time. Yeah. yeah, come on. That was like Damien Chazelle. Like the Oscars has everything. It's got the emotions. It's got you know everything you want out of an award ceremony. And we want to be upset. We yeah. also want to be happy when we see the picks. We we want. However, to if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood does win this category, I will throw a fit. 
Oh yeah. You yeah. Because then you know it's just actors voting for actors. Yeah, it'll just be it's gonna be a mess. I mean if there was a Twitter will go insane. Oh yeah. If there was definitely a film that I did like okay, I liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but it was not no, I did, but film it, of the year. But you know what it is? It's because you know that the Academy Awards have a tendency to pick wartime historical pieces, musicals, um Kind of heavy-handed, you know, like racism, yeah, kind of like racial a, themes. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Uh, it's ma honestly it, great, but like, don't just pick the movie because the movie talks about it. Like, yeah, does the movie present also a good story alongside it? Yeah, that, that's what I want to look yeah. more into. So, you know that they pick these kinds of movies. So, so there are some of these that you're like, okay, cool. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and that seems to have like a small leg up already. Um, 1917 seems to be having that Jojo Rabbit. That's why I'm not really cutting any of them from contention like I did in the other categories. Mm -hmm. But I just think that 1917 will win. Yeah, I I agree. It's just 1917. It's just it's the movie. It seems like the movie of the year that cannot be denied. Yeah, like it's just it's, everything was set up for this moment. It's the gravity of this year. Does that yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. If, if all of you guys have watched Gravity, it's that it's that for this year. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, if you guys enjoy that, um, please let us know somewhere. Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, our website. Doesn't matter. Um, if you enjoyed more of this, we'll, we'll do another one kind of recapping what the actual winners was and what our thoughts were. Uh, so uh, check out for that. And make sure you subscribe because um, with, with our buddy here, uh, Guido, I, I'm hoping we're going to make a lot more content for you guys. So enjoy the Oscars on the 9th and we hope to see you guys soon.